Hey, Game Master Player here for another Dungeon Master vlog, car vlog-ish, journey vlog, there we go. So, first things first, uh, I think I'm going to have my, give my players a boon, if they're paying attention, and, you know, see if they're watching this and stuff. So the next game, for my players are watching this, the next game we play, then you can pass me a note. It says Monkey Pie. If you can pass me a note that says Monkey Pie, I will give you something special for the game. But, you also need to stop watching now. Because there might be spoilers. Just a warning. So, okay. Let's move on. Where we left off um, was the pirate stuff. Um, some you talking about items, unique items, and things like that. So, I was going over the treasure uh, list, not list, not all of them, more, uh, the tre treasure, yeah, the treasure charts that you get to roll on, the random treasure charts. And I decided to give, since money's not as big of a concern for this group, I decided to give my players the ability to cash in 10 gold pieces per percentage point on the first chart. Now that might change as time goes on. This is for the horde chart, by the way. I forgot what page, 140 something? I don't remember exactly which page it was on. And it was uh, it's something that so they can get better items. The idea was for them to get better items and not have to spend as much money. Because um, they, can, they can, don't get me wrong, they're still going to get money because they're going to get art items and they're going to have some cash left over. And they can buy things like uh, some armor upgrades and things like that that they need. But most of the other stuff's been provided for them, like food and uh, food, water, you know, basic places to live. Think, you know, basics like that is covered for them. So I'm taking that out of the equation. I'm going to try to get them to have the ability to get more really good items in a short period, shorter period of time. So I decided to do, to make that change in the chart. And they actually rolled pretty well. They were able to get 207 gold pieces and they converted 160 of it to 16 percentage points because they rolled a 70% on the chart and got them up to an 86, which is the highest they could go with what they had. And with that 86 though, they were able to roll on the F table, I believe it was the F table, for items, which includes like plus one weapons and stuff, which is really cool. So, I decided that, you know, I'm going to start using this more often. They get to choose. They don't have to. They get to choose. And there's going to be bonuses and, uh, to the percentage based on uh, the difficulty, the area, that kind of stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to alter that as well. I'm not telling my players that, though. So, <laughs> but we're going back to the story. i got to work on the story now. Uh, I apologize. I have to my coffee mug. That was a long pause. Apologize for that. Anyway, now going back to the story that we're developing here. Now I've got the players that are going to be taking a cart, a wagon and cart trip. They're going to be going east, which will be heading towards Goblin territory, the bog, that kind of stuff. I'm going to have a fort in the east that's going to be an older fort, an older uh, stronghold. I don't really want to call it stronghold. More like a fort. Outpost. Outpost. That's a good word. It's going to be an outpost. It's going to have some things that are going to hold clues to the fact that I'm going to have that the Goliath population used to be more prominent and it has died down. And there's like you know, only a couple of clans left. So, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use that. Also, another big thing that I'm going to do is this is going to be the site where our paladin's father was taken. So I'm going to make it to a personal thing. And then link, then I have the ability to link in the character's backstory. So I can link in a character's backstory, provide a potential foe down the road, and a location to attend and get to a potential foe. And I'm going to tie into some more of the... Uh, oh. I don't know if I'm going to tie it into the backstory yet. I ain't got to work on that one. So, but going back to the backstory, I've, I've decided that the villain is indeed going to be a necromancer. The villain is also going to have at least a flesh golem protecting their interests, aka there's going to be a location that's going to have more clues, more items, more things, and I'm going to have a flesh golem protect it. Now, the one thing I'm definitely not going to do is I don't gauge, like, I understand that people, you, you want to have difficulty levels that match the group and things like that. 
that. I also believe in the fact that there can be times when things are either going to be too hard to do or too easy to do. Where it's like, wow, we should have done this a long time ago. This is a cakewalk. Or, holy crap, we can't do this right now. That's the, that's the key. That is a key part of this. I'm not going to pull punches about it. I'm not going to... You know, there's a lot of things I'm not going to do. One of them is, if it's something that's really hard, it's going to be really hard. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to, you know, it's going to have to show them patience. They're going to have to plan for whatever it takes, like the whole dragon thing. I'm not going to just go face the dragon now. Sure, it's a goal. It's a goal. I'm not going to make it weaker. I'm not going to, you know, thin it out and go, ah, well, it's only a hatchling and it's kind of weak and it's sickly and blah. No, no, not at all. It's going to be, it's going to be a potent enemy, a potent foe. And that's, I, I want to make sure my players know this too, and I've met, mentioned it to them several times. There's going to be times in uh, the situations that they get into will be not necessarily for their difficulty level. So far, this stuff's been pretty much on par. I've been doing it just to gauge, you know, so they get better with combat, comfortable with combat. Ooh, sorry, I'm tired. Ooh. Uh, good morning, by the way. You know, this for me, it's morning. It's a whole nice uh, seven something in the morning. And I've been on the road for at least a half hour. Yay! <laughs> and so, but anyway, the idea is, is if I can get the players to start guiding their, you know, using their own intuition, their own choices, guide them where they need to go, let them do it all. I'm not, I'm not going to do it for them. I'm not going to just you know, do uh, adventure through adventure through adventure. I believe that there should be areas that are going to be too hard. There should be fights that are going to be too tough. And it's up to the players to decide whether that's too tough or not. It's up to the players to decide whether we should retreat or we should stay. That's important. That's very important for me in the story. It can uh, provide lessons for the group and everything else too, but I don't want to have a railroad feeling. I don't want to have where it's all just completely guided. I don't want to have that. I want to have where my players get to choose everything. Everything. Well, they don't get to choose the bad guy. They, get to, well, they do get to choose their bad guy. They just don't get to choose all of their bad guys. They get to choose which bad guy they want to fight at the time. There we go. That's better. So, and that's kind of the goal that I'm working towards. But, like I said, the villain's definitely going to be a necromancer. The villain's going to be an outsider necromancer, no less. And he was, was found in, he was not corrupted, but found the remains of the illusionist that was a member of the, the Adventurer's Guild that died. I'm not sure who's going to be the, I think he might even be the cause of killing the previous group, or this villain's team, his adventuring party, is going to be the cause of killing the other adventuring party. And, but I'm going to make the necromancer the only survivor at this point. So, things like that. And he's going to be, he's going to be potent. I'm not sure exactly all of his details yet. I'm still working on that. But I think it's going to fit into the backstory. Like, everyone's backstory. The backstory of the area, that kind of stuff. So, he's going to be a villain in the truest sense. He's going to be a villain of the people, the villain of the players. He's just going to be a downright villain. No one's going to like him. That's the, that's the whole point. I actually have a wonderful, um, wonderful idea that goes with the, uh, the head wizard, who is mostly scholarly, who has not been an adventurer, really. But he has... He's, he is also going to be... I can't remember the, the school now. I'm thinking about this, the school that Wizard League School that he's a part of. But it's the one that allows him to charm. And believe it or not, that's going to be his focus. He's going to be a very charming old man. We can also alter himself and things like that as well. And, be, and he's also going to be a descendant of the original adventurers, the original group that set up the Adventurers Guild, and things like that. But you also know the bloodline is thinning. The adventurers themselves that, are, that have the bloodline are kind of dying out. And the reason is, is because most of them become adventurers. Because they, they see it as their, their legacy to do that. So, a lot of the original direct descendants and such like that didn't make it. They died. Um, and were killed. So there's very few direct descendants left that can, you know, I'm a descendant of. Now, and he knows this. The wizard knows this. So what he did is he he stacked the deck. He used his magical ability to alter, alter his look, to charm women, and to bed them in the hopes of producing offspring. Multiple offspring. So the blood 
bloodline can continue. Because others didn't care. They, they, shunned, they were shunned from it. Some are hidden. There's some hidden bloodlines, don't get me wrong. But he decided to take it into his own destiny, into his own hands, in his own control. And he decided to expand the bloodline. Now, because of that, and because of that, he is an old man. I, I get to screw with all of my player characters because I'm going to basically say that he's going to be the, in some cases, the father or grandfather of some of the player characters, and they don't know. <laughs> so, um, so I can make them descendants of the original bloodline. <laughs> and the plan is to actually to have every player character descendant of the original bloodline. And so this is going to be, this is going to be the, the final hurrah, no matter what. It makes the story more epic, it's going to make it feel great. The gnome community is dying out, the, the goliath community is dying out, so those player characters are going to be from there. The wood elf, the outlander wood elf, is going to be from a descendant of the family before the family went and uh, did that. So he's a direct. He's not a direct descendant of one of the original members. He comes from one of the original members' brothers or sisters. Not sure which yet. I think it kind of doesn't matter. And that's how he's related. And the same thing with uh, not the same thing. Different with the the. I think it's Genasi. I think it's other Genasi. Genasi. I don't remember. Uh, we've got a fire monk, and he is going to be a direct descendant because they left. The, all the Ganassis left the area after that and uh, moved on. He was drawn back and he's actually a descendant of one of the originals. Unfortunately, uh, well, the, there were very few original, like there, there was one member of the party, he's going to be a fire one, he was grievously injured and he left for other lands to try to, to heal and he obviously never made it back. And that's how my druid is going to be a descendant. He's going to be, again, a direct descendant, and he's going to have a tie-in, and I think it's going to be fantastic because I can do this. So, I got a new player. I don't know if I mentioned it last time, a rogue. Uh, that, <laughs> um, she's also going to be a descendant, probably from the wizard. And since nobody has really gone too far in the family life, that means that the rogue and the wizard are going to be bastards, which is fantastic. They don't know that yet. So, <laughs> and they're going to be related. I love it. I love I, I love how you can do story elements and just totally screw with things like that. So, but the wizard himself is the, is the first one of the descendants from, you know, the, the wizard player character that actually showed magical ability and, want, and wanted to do magical things. So what happened is that uh, the, the, the head wizard, the, the guy in charge, freaked out and prevented him from ever having a position that allowed him to do scribing things. He never got to do paperwork, he never got to do you know, all the busy work that most apprentices do. And now the logic is, is because since as a, the player was a soldier before and he's stronger, he did all of the work that most of the other ones couldn't do because he was more efficient at it. And he was hard on him, at least the player thinks he was hard on him because he came from such a background that is, you know, kind of demeaning for wizards. You know, he's all physical, combat, not intellectual, and he decided to become a wizard, and so it was kind of a humility thing. Or so he thinks. Actually, he's being hard on because it's his son. <laughs> and he knows it's his son. And he's very surprised that he has a progeny that is actually magically active now. And he wants to be an adventurer and is actually doing all this stuff. So, um, so he's being hard on him. He's, he's being really hard on him and, and he's, he wants him to be basically the best adventurer he can be. He's doing, he's doing the best to be, fight for it all. Exit earn it all. So, <laughs> don't tell my players. So, uh, you know, it, it, the idea is, is that if I can get... You know, and I've got so I've got this tie now. I can get everybody into the story, and I would go back to other aspects of the story as well. Like the, the original adventure group was part of the kingdom that left, but at the same time, the, there was a problem in the kingdom, and there was the kingdom was kind of dis, not, I don't want to say 
say disintegrating, but the kingdom was going downhill, uh, the, the royalty, and I've got a good tie-in for that. So what happened is that they asked for help, never got it, and they saw the, the dragon as a blessing in disguise. So what they decided to do is this blessing in disguise, they were cut off from the rest of the kingdom, which is great because they, they were afraid that things were going to get really bad. And this necromancer is from the original kingdom. He is a minion of the new king. Well, not the new king. So uh, I've already decided that the old king became a lich and he is basically forever living now at this point decided to basically ravage his own kingdom and conquer and enslave and everything. It's going to be terrible. So, and I decided, you know, so the players aren't going to really want to go back anyway. Kind of, you know, that's, you know, concern. So the idea also is because, you know, I want to have, I want to have another villain. I want to have another bad guy. And I want it to be not what the players expected. I want to just flip it around. So, and there's, and there's going to be allies on the other side, too. But all the history here has been recorded to where it was the dragon's fault, the dragon's fault, the dragon's fault. But in all actuality, it wasn't the dragon's fault. The dragon helped it along. They, you know, we're going to, that's why there's a fort at the pass. Why would, be there, why would there be a fort? Which nobody quite thought of this at the time. Why would there be a huge fort or garrison at the entrance, or at the end of the pass to begin with? There should be an outpost. Yeah, totally. And in this new game, when I introduce the actual outpost, you know, they're going to be able to say, you know, get a feel for it. <clears throat> so, you know, what's going to happen? They're going to look at it, and hopefully the players have enough thought. But of course, we play really late, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold it against them to question the fact that why is there a garrison, a huge garrison, still, still, there is still a garrison there Exit right to Indiana um, 15, at the edge of the uh, uh, pass. Warsaw. Nobody comes through. That's because they were, they were preparing for an attack, and. Some of the things that's going to be going on, since no one, no other players have been to the garrison at this point, is that the garrison troops, um, they're going to be working on building a, a, a wall that nobody knows about. Nobody's been told that there's a wall being built there. None of the players have been told it. Uh, none of the, even a lot of the NPCs don't know. The guildmaster for the Adventurers Guild isn't going to know. The wizard is. Of course he's going to know. He's one of them that helped decide to build a wall. <laughs> um... So that's going to be one of those things that they're going to learn too, that the bad guys are on the other side. One way or the other, the bad guys are on the other side. But now that the bad guys are kind of leaking forward is when now that there's a problem. Because you've got goblins at, you know, at the gates that are starting to come in. There's now kobolds. It, it, it's starting to turn into a big problem. So hopefully I can get the players to see what's going on and get to read in the story a little bit more. And... Um, in the next video, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some of the story arc elements that I'm working on. That'll hopefully allow me to walk through it, talk through it, and get some better things. So, and as a reminder for my players that are watching, the that we ruined it from the spoilers. That secret word is monkey eye, right? Right? Okay. So remember, monkey eye. You pass me, pass it to me in the in uh, before the game, in a note. Don't tell anybody else, and you will get rewarded. For at least watching my videos. So thank you everybody and I will see you all in the next video.